good to see you this evening. It's especially good to welcome Bishop David for uh, this uh, Desert Island Hymns. You know the format. I've tried to explain the format to him, so hopefully uh, it will be a service which uh, goes really well. It's an opportunity for people to share um, their, if you like, favourite hymns or hymns that remind them of times in their life which had a particular impact on their faith. Uh, so uh, that's that's how we do the service. Is quite simple, but Bishop David has taken it very literally. So he's um, got something to take to his desert island as well, which we'll hear about later. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we're, we're going to um, begin with me asking um, the first question, and then I'll. Um, Bishop David to uh, share with us. Um, your first hymn, I understand, goes back a long way for you. You're, we're looking quite back, quite a long way back. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about uh, your early entry into faith, uh, your, your, how it began for you, and also the um, sense of vocation as well? Right, well, my father was ordained when I was six, and he went to be a curate in Marthley, which is East Hull, uh, in Yorkshire. And it's a very rough part. It's a bit like Splot is Marthley, but not as glamorous. <laughs> so if you get the picture... Uh, my, my parents brought up in Splot. It's very glamorous. <laughs> I said it's not as glamorous. Uh, and uh, yeah, my first day at school, it was Flinton Grove, a school by the drain. So again, a very glamorous spot. And all the kids ganged up on me and said, eh, nah, 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 your dad's a vicar. And I said, no, he's not actually. He's the assistant curate of Marley. He's just been ordained a deacon. <laughs> and they're so flummoxed them. They never caused me any trouble after that. So uh, I was always grateful for all this sort of Anglican terminology. But obviously I grew up, you'll hear more about this later, I grew up in a vicarage. And my dad was a very faithful parish priest. He was faithful with his prayers. He was a great visitor, and those sort of things dawned on me, and in due course, um, I took up the ministry myself. But way back in Hull, I remember this, um, Graham Greene is a famous novelist, and he wrote a book called Power and the Glory about vocation. And there's a line in it which says, there's always one moment in childhood when a door opens and lets the future in. There's always one moment in childhood when a door opens and lets the future in. And I believe that, and I think it's a good game for all of us to play and think, hmm, what was the moment in our childhoods when a door opened and let our future in? But one of my moments was I was taken to see a film in 1963 when I was six, and it was um, starring Peter Sellers, and it was a film called Heavens Above, and it was a very, it was a, a sort of Baltic Brothers film, very funny. And the basic plot was that the, the diocese had got mixed up as dire as he will always do. Um, they sent the wrong vicar to the wrong parish. Uh, Peter Sellers was a little brummy vicar who was a salt of the earth guy and they sent him to this very posh parish and um, he took the parish by storm really and appointed a, a West Indian dustman as church warden and let the gypsies come and live in the vicarage and everybody was very shocked and he, uh, he got sort of very well in with this there was a lady who came to church who was very wealthy and ran a factory and, and she sort of really supported him unlike everybody else and so she you know it was the first food banks really it was giving away food willy-nilly and um, i remember watching this film and as i say it was just a sort of salt of the earth guy uh, he cycled around his parish on a monk and inevitably it didn't work out and people took against him and he was the diocese didn't know what to do with him, so in the end they made him the Bishop of Outer Space. <laughs> but um, when he, he got this church warden who was a dustman, which again is quite a West Indian church warden was a dustman, which was quite shocking in those days. But I remember them in the vicarage, they struck up this, our first hymn, Praise My Soul. And um, the dustman played the piano and they just sang the last verse together. Angels in the heights adore him, ye behold him face to face. And I've never heard him before, really, and I thought, oh, that's a nice hymn. And um, when we went back home, we had a 
even though my dad was only a curate, the vicar who was a bachelor lived in the curate's house, which was nice and warm. We got stuffed into the vicarage, which wasn't nice or warm. But we had a butler's pantry. We didn't have a butler, but we had a butler's pantry, which was this ancient harmonium. And I taught myself to play on the harmonium, and I played the hymn. And you know, was, I needed to get out more, obviously. Yeah. But, <laughs> and it just stayed with me, it stayed with me ever since. So that's my first choice. And as I say, it sort of goes back to my childhood. And years later, I think about 35 years later, I saw the film again. And it just brought tears to my eyes because I realised in some ways I'd worked it out. I was, when I was first a priest in the 1980s, I cycled around the parish. And that wasn't really a done thing there. And I remember somebody saying, it's beneath your dignity to use a bicycle. It's come full circle now because everybody bikes now. But um, yeah, I remember somebody saying, it's beneath your dignity. But I had to cycle because we only had one car. And I got married, my wife was a teacher. And the big plan was for me to take her to school and then use the car for my ministry and then pick her up at the end of the day. But she was the last teacher to leave. So after about two or three days, I got fed up of sitting in the playground. So I thought, oh, blow this for a lot. So I learned. I taught myself to ride a bike. Well, I've been cycling ever since, and it's, it's a great pastoral tool. Uh, you're seen around, you don't have to stop if you don't want to talk to somebody, and you pedal a bit more quickly. And you <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't want to stop, you can. And uh, as I say, I saw this film 30 odd years later, I thought, oh, there's quite a lot of that has unfolded in my own life. So there we go. So, so we're going to now stand to sing the first hymn, which is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. <laughs> 